So we'll call the meeting of the Formation Committee Special Meeting Agenda, 10 a.m. May 25th, 2017. Uh, we'll call the roll. Director Thurlow? Here. Director Brandt? Here. Director Geis? Here. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, and we now have a public comment period. Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to item number one. Consider request for proposals for a general manager approved and returned to the board of directors for final approval prior to its release. Uh, we have uh, four items uh, listed. Discuss and consider the proposal, review a draft independent contractor agreement, including scope of work, discuss a process for selecting a general manager, direct a committee member to draft a written committee report to the board. Okay, so I, I can kind of start off on this. So you guys did a great job. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, so there are three documents that you'll see that are attached. They're all late attachments. You can find them over there on the table for members of the public. Um, the first is just an edited draft agreement uh, for services um, with an independent contractor. Um, on the, the the main changes to this are. Um, Exhibit A, which I'll talk about in a moment in another context, because the main change to Exhibit A uh, is also noted in the next document, which is the draft request for proposals uh, from an interim general manager. So at first we were talking about doing a job description, but in the interest of trying to keep this person an independent contractor, I thought it might be better to seek proposals from people and have them kind of outline what their work plan is going to be instead of us just straight up you know telling them uh, based off of what we discussed at the last meeting which was that um, we thought that the the scope of services that we had was too specific and so we wanted to broaden it a little bit I like it um, so the RFP is pretty standard it's largely actually structured off of the legal RFP that I brought a while back it has an introduction um, which uh, speaks about uh, our needs um, there's a description of the IBCSD um, the scope of work, um, so the scope of work is the, first off, A, creation, preparation, and provision of product necessary for the conduct of meetings of the board of directors and subcommittees, B, assistance in the creation of the district's financial and accounting structure, and the creation of financial and accounting procedures, C, design a budget process and a fiscal year 2017-18 budget. And that's highlighted because I realize that that doesn't mesh with our timeline very well. Um, D, conduct special projects in coordination with the district's vision and mission. E, development of a strategic plan to guide the vision of the board of directors with activities, actions, and needs of the district. F, confer with interim legal counsel and secure legal assistance as necessary. Um, so these are kind of the six things that I thought were the most essential, and I tried to both leave them as broad as possible, um, but also um, give them sort of a purpose. So even you know, if we're talking about special projects, we would hope that that would be in coordination with the district's vision and mission. Um, so in order, some of these things that are mentioned are things that the board still needs to take action on to do, such as like designated vision and mission. Um, and um, here I'll talk about another thing that is something that we wouldn't be able to handle, but another committee would in the moment. Um, if you flip over the page, you'll have the timing and requirements. So um, we have a regular meeting on June 6th. The opening of proposal submission window would begin on June 7th. Um, the deadline for proposals would be June 19th. Um, then there would be a committee that would review the proposals from June 20th to June 23rd um, and notify um, all the uh, proposers of whether or not they were selected to be uh, finalists. Um, then out of the finalists, the board would pick one at the June 19th or June 29th meeting. Um, then they would notify the finalists uh, of whether or not they were picked uh, the following day on June 30th. And then uh, July 5th is the expected uh, signing of, of the uh, agreement. Um, so there's a section just basically about how to submit your proposal. Um, and there are still, still some things that need to be ironed out. For example, we're asking people that if they're going to mail them, they should mail them to the third district office. We have to confirm with the third district office and see if they're willing to do that. Um, let's see. And then, then uh, in, in terms of review, um, I left it open-ended as to what, how we would structure the evaluation committee. 
um, because I think that it would be best if we let another committee figure that out because I think that it's a matter of policy as to how we review um, selection of firms or um, you know creating the process for that. Uh, I think that would generally just make things go a lot smoother. Um, so then we have a notification of uh, finalists. Uh, oh, and yeah, that's another one where we need to put the committee's name in there. Um, the proposal would um, contain basically some boilerplate stuff, a title page, a table of context, a uh, letter of transmittal, um, and then a more detailed proposal. And the three main components of the detailed proposal are um, basically a state, an affirmative statement of independence um, from the board of directors um, and a, uh, a statement of professional relationships. Um, this is something that I found in a couple legal proposals and it seems pretty standard. Um, then there's the uh, qualifications and experiences. Um, and then number three, I think it's the most important, which is the work plan, which is a little, kind of a detailed way of, this is how I as a contractor think that I can fulfill your needs as defined in the scope of services. Um, so then it speaks a little more about the evaluation process and there's a line for Ethan to sign it. Um, the third thing I have is a committee report which kind of summarizes some of this stuff. Um, this is um, this is sort of a template that I think that going forward for big items would be good to use, basically modeled off of the staff report that you'd find at the county or any other uh, public agency that has staff. Um, and there's a the recommendation, the motion, um, basically a, a summary. It has a reprinted timeline and also a reprinted scope of services. Um, it also talks about how uh, possible actions that the board president could take uh, in order to float this RFP and get it out there uh, into uh, potential applicants um, into their circles. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I wanted to bring up. Um, generally, that's that's it. This committee report is still um, draft because you'll see the last line is on May 25th, the committee dot, 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 because we're in this meeting now. So um, what I basically wanted to do is mostly get feedback on the scope of services, um, the timeline, and there's one more thing. I'm trying to find out what it is. Um, I would just have a short discussion about um, the uh, things that are highlighted where it says the blank committee and about how that process is something that rather than us deciding that we should leave that up to a matter of policy um, so with that also if you have any questions like that you've seen right off the bat um, go ahead and ask them now so uh, I think my I think this is excellent I mean this is professional work so uh, and it's amazing that you were able to do it so quickly my only question is on the timeline and whether 12 days to have this job open essentially for 12 days mm -hmm. is adequate time given that um, June 7th is a Wednesday and June 10th and 11th is a weekend, as is June 17th and 18th. So really, you're only talking about seven or eight business days. Mm -hmm. Is your thinking that we're, that's enough? Um, you know, I, I think initially I, the thought was that we wanted to move the process along as, as quickly as possible. Um, but I, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't factor in the weekends. So, you know, it, I think that it would be, it might be advantageous now looking at it for us to extend that. I, I totally agree with the idea of expediting the process. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I just build in all kinds of extra days along the way because that's how these things work. Mm -hmm. um, but, t but to close it so quickly, mm -hmm. unless, you, unless you informally open it, so mm -hmm. in other words, uh, but we don't meet until June 6th? Yes. So the board really can't 
I mean, is there is it, what's your sense? Is there any informal interest in this? Informal interests. Um, informal interest in in people submitting RFPs. In people submitting RFPs, um, I know of at least one who would be okay. interested. So I I think that um, that notwithstanding, it still would make sense to increase this. What is your sense on how long? Um, well, I think um, unless there's heck of a lot, you know, somebody graduating and doesn't have a job or they're looking and they, you know, want to hang out and this is a good place to hang out, how many applicants will we really get? You know, you really, uh, what I envision is somebody that's been committed to the process, they're interested in the organization, they've probably been involved in the process before in a unique position to serve especially to serve for free unless we can fundraise to help pay yeah. them I don't think you're going to get very many applicants so mm -hmm. but I'd hate to you know short to, to be short on the process and then say oh you know we don't like them yeah uh, and that, that's the only other piece that I'm I, mm -hmm. I I really am going to be opposed to us just bringing in somebody because we don't have anybody else. Right, that's mm -hmm. the wrong way to hire people. That can totally that can totally destroy an organization yeah. as opposed to yeah, enhance the organization. And you got to make sure you know I, I've hired you know lots of people in my career, and I think you really got to have it. My motto is they that whoever you hire. You want them to come to work for you, and they want to come to work for the board, and it's a mutual agreement that this is a great fit. And if you don't have that, if you don't get that 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 commitment, it's you don't want to hire just anybody to fill a spot. You know, that happens all the time in government organizations when you deal with human resource departments. They get you this list. And you think you have to hire off the list when if it's a bad list and there aren't any good people on there, you just go, that's not worth the, 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 that, that would be, that, that would, you got to be able to reject the list. So you got to have in yeah. your process to say, mm -hmm. okay, we don't think this is going to work out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what, what do you think would be a, an adequate time window? Um, well, I would just add another week. Another week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think yeah. the, key, the key is um, how are you going to do the outreach on this? How are we going to do the outreach on this? Um, so mean, if we you put ads in the newspaper, can't do that. It costs money. Um, yeah. Do we put something on Craigslist? That's. I'm getting, I'm getting a smile from our intern. I just put something on Craigslist yesterday. Not for the district. Was it a sofa or? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, well, like I, I, the, the, the two things that, that, that are in the draft committee report are that um, it can be floated on a number of these government websites. Um, of course, I think that it would, I think it can be inferred that people who are frequenting those are looking for work and not necessarily. Um, for a pro bono arrangement, um, so I mean, with with that said, I I think that a lot of this, as it stands now, would be left up to the board president to take all the action that's necessary to float this around. Um, I would imagine well, I that would all look of like us, all of us need to float it. I think that's kind of like we all need to send this out. I was just sitting here thinking, now can you share this? Now that it's part of our official committee um, um, discussions, can you share it, this? It, with it the is board? it is the draft is a public document now. So it seems to me that we should maybe share it with the board ahead of time, um, separately with the idea of telling board members. You know, you can share a document with the board. You just can't talk to them about. Oh, you can't stuff say that we just, talked about. Okay. All right. how, how did we get the, you know, in our initial meeting for the formation where we got 100 people plus to show up and some, you know, influential people, 
how would we get it out to them to disseminate this? Because I actually saw at that meeting some retiree show up that I go, oh, I bet that person would might be interested in doing something pro bono to help the district out. Mm -hmm. But why well, I you know I I think that that might come down to every single director and people who are interested in our success helping with this outreach because I mean in terms of you know and, and I don't know how far and maybe I'm just young but I don't know how far an ad in the paper goes these days even if we had the money in our account to yeah, do something Craigslist like works better <laughs> I know you're the I know, why I'm out of business yeah I know I was gonna say I know you're a newspaper guy George um, I know my friend sold his 1964 GTO on Craigslist. <laughs> I've always wanted a 60. As I knew you. <laughs> um, so but the that, there's ads that go on on Craigslist today for jobs, so it, it seems like a way to get it out. I'm not even saying that Craigslist is yeah. the answer. I think so a lot of this is going to come down to us going and, you know. We're putting it on maybe, the Maybe it is. List. You know, I remember when, when Doss spoke at, the, at uh, your appointment and said, all you retired government administrators out there who are still looking for the fix because you're watching this feed, uh, go help these people out. Yeah. Um, and you know maybe that's what's going to take. Maybe we're yeah. going to have to go and speak in front of the the other interesting thing that could come people. out of this process if we do if we do it right is you know we could get a great pro bono general manager, but we might get some other people interested that we would say, mm -hmm. hey, that's a good fit for that person to Join come on and help the help with the budget process because he's mm -hmm. a budget expert you know right. and mm -hmm. he could assist the general manager mm -hmm. general manager could get some help um, and we could have more of a team it, it's nicer when you have a team to work with and it's you know even you know I'm sure Spencer having will you can say that that really helps working as a team to get a product out the door just other than doing it by yourself mm -hmm. I thought you were going to talk Will into doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? So the other piece is to, I think, your point about Doss and your point about the people who showed up, Joan. I think Doss and Joan, particularly Joan, may have connections among retired <coughs> folks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I do think okay. the whole board needs to sort of do the outreach. But I like this. Is there? Is do we need? Yeah, you guys did motion? a great job. <clears throat> we could you, maybe right? wordsmith something on this design a budget process, since we're going to miss the. We need to. Yeah. Well, and that's yeah, and, that, and that's kind of what I brought up is that yeah, yeah even we, even if we rushed it, we wouldn't have it in time to right. do the budget. That's probably going to be the next thing, I would imagine. That well, they're still going to work on a budget process. What we're going to end up doing is. We're gonna we're gonna cobble together a, a budget, a very rudimentary budget yeah, right. thing process, and, and so I think what you want this person to do is right. to is to put in place something that's a little more sophisticated. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let you me want see a motion to approve all this? Um, how, how I have I have the language that I think is right in my laptop, just because mm -hmm. I don't want to get this one wrong. No, you want no. me to make a suggestion for this budget yes, thing? Yes, please do. So instead of maybe just put implement the fiscal year 2017-18 um, proposed budget and assist in designing a budget process refining and designing a budget process for the fiscal year 1819 budget mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, okay that's great um, does that make sense yeah I, I think yeah. so um, so what I'd say and I have one more thing to say after I make this motion but what I would say is um, motion to recommend to the board of directors that they declare their intention to pursue the obtainment of an independent contractor interim general manager, approach the or approve the interim general manager RFP with edits and direct the president of the board 
to take necessary action to float it in coordination with the whole board and approve the draft agreement between the IVCSD and an interim general manager for future execution. It's good with me. I'll second it. Um, yes, yeah, so the last thing that I just wanted to say is that I think, um, um, and we can, I have a, another quick motion to make after this, but I, I would say that I think we're all going to have to um, just brush up again and, and really do a good job of explaining this to the board. And I think that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make the committee report is so that there's some background and hopefully other board members will be able to review this ahead of time and, um, you know, ask try to get some of their questions worked out before they come to the to the meeting um, because I think it will be best if we can um, if we can just have have this whole thing go uh, smoothly um, but also as it pertains to um, the question of independent contractor or employee um, I think we should all review this again um, and make sure that uh, we think everything is copacetic when I looked at a um, document from the IRS that was um, the sort of 20 point test to see if you're an independent contractor or a general manager, that was basically what I was trying to uh, match whatever I was writing in the scope for services um, against. Okay. Um, and uh, in that, in, with those 20 points, you don't have to um, make sure that you've met every single one to be considered not an independent contractor, but there are certain ones that are prioritized, and I think that by and large we've done a, a pretty good sh job showing that this person would be independent of the district and would be um, an independent contractor under law. Yeah, um, you, you know the whole independent contractor thing. He, uh, I've used the twenty-point checklist for years, and we originally took a lot of action to change independent con we pe people really weren't independent contractors at the county and we went through a long a, a, a pretty big deal to to remove those and make them into employees but it, it you know it's very judgmental the 20 point checklist and you go just because you want them has have it to be an independent contractor you kind of talk yourself into oh the majority is fine but it really gets down to that other document I handed out that's more the board has to understand that they want to have this individual on board, but that that person's giving us advice as much as we're giving them advice. Mm -hmm. And they're bringing their, their expertise or their style or their ability to help us. Mm -hmm. and, and it just has to be that, that understanding right. to... Plus, they're not getting paid, so the issue of independent contractor isn't as big because there's no money involved. And at the point that there is money involved, then you just got to make sure that relationship's well, the same. Yeah, and that's also the other piece of it. I mean, uh, you know, I think this is perilous ground. I hate to say that on the record, but um, because the other piece of it is, is can you truly, can somebody truly do it as a pro bono? Right, and I under think law, under labor, California labor law, can you truly yeah. donate your labor for something where there's where there's that kind of interaction that you just described? Yeah. Well, I don't know about labor law, but I know in government code that it says the board of directors will designate a general manager and their rate if of pay, and it says comma if any. Yeah. So. Um, I know that at least in if any, okay. yeah, if any. Right, so we're gonna my hang, reading of the of the we're government, hang, yeah. I, I, my I th house is going to hang on if any. I, yeah. I think <laughs> we're I think we're okay going down this road, but I hope the uh -huh. board, from my point of view, in doing this, is I don't like to have interns work for me for free when I was at the county. I wanted to pay them for their services, and I think, and my commitment is. I want to try and fundraise enough to give whoever's working for us at least a stipend. That's mm -hmm. good. And, That's good. you know, at least to get them to have it help pay for their insurance. At least if we send them off on business expenses that they're covered. Mm 
-hmm. And so hopefully we, we, we do raise enough money for legal and a stipend for a general manager to, to, to fund those. Yeah, I and agree. I think that should be in our budget too, if we mm -hmm. in our proposed budget. Well, and it is in attachment B of the agreement that we're looking at that. Yeah. Um, you know, we if if we're able to fundraise, then we would like to pay you a stipend. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, um, I'm trying to think of there. Well, I'm comfortable with this whole package, and and I'm comfortable with the way and the broadness that you put in on these expertise mm -hmm. things, you know, that they would mm -hmm. want their expertise to do this. I, mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's, it's really mm -hmm. well done. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, la the last thing I'll say before we vote on this one specifically is just, um, it's going to be really important that we, um, that, that we know this front and back when we go to the board and be able to, to frame the issue correctly and explain it to them yeah. um, in the meeting. Um, so I have an idea about it, like a presentation or something that we could give at the meeting, uh, but we can. Go and you ahead could and go on you could do a presentation on the twenty point checklist, and you could do a presentation on that other document that I mm -hmm. gave you, which is like that's the next version of the twenty point checklist because mm -hmm. that 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 thing that that I handed out says well, it's really about control, and you know, it's a fine yeah. line. And so it'll be important that the board understands that this person isn't under our control insofar as we can direct them to do things. This person is assisting us um, as the board of directors right. in uh, setting up these things that are in the scope of services and mm -hmm. we don't have that direct line of control over them. Now there are certain things that we can do to try to put them on the right path as right. we talked about with the possibly a mission and a vision statement um, and the idea that they're going to uh, help prepare a strategic plan for us, which I would imagine we would have at least a large amount of input into, yeah. um, but we we don't have that direct control over them. Um, and with that, yeah, I, I, I that's, that's all I have, I think. <coughs> So I'll read back the motion again. The motion is to recommend to the Board of Directors that they declare their intention to pursue the obtainment of an independent contractor interim general manager, approve the interim general manager RFP with edits, and direct the president of the board and the other members of the Board of Directors to take necessary action to float it. And approve the draft agreement between IVCSD and an interim general manager for future execution. Call for the question. You Any public to, comment? To the public first. Jonathan? Nothing. All right. We'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Again, you guys, well done. Thank I mean, you. At some point, just a little thing when you do on these uh, committee reports mm -hmm. you might want to make it a standard practice to have a little fiscal impact section just to say yeah yeah that's right yeah. so I actually I, I left that out there um, I can put it back in one of the reasons is just other discussions that I had had with with folks about um, other things but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'll, it just I'll gives you the opportunity there. if it's part of the board letter then the board can have that discussion about, hey, this is pro bono, but if we can fundraise, we could mm -hmm. offer to pay for their business expense right. reimbursement and that and their insurance okay. and how we're going to handle that. Um, so speaking of the staff report, we still need to approve that. Uh, so I move to approve the staff report with edits uh, presented by Director Brandt and ask that it be included in the Board of Directors attachments at the relevant uh, Board of Directors meeting. Second. Any public comment? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, yes, and I guess the only other thing that I would say is that um, re regarding some sort of a presentation, um, when we bring this to the full board, um, how do we want to delegate that here amongst ourselves? How do we want to handle that? You're bringing it to the full board on the 6th, so I'm not going to be there. That's right. So we'll have to delegate yeah. it to, 
I'd say we delegate it to the preparer. I'd be happy. Be okay. Happy to yeah. do so. You get you get what's in the document. You wrote what's in yeah. the document. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. looked at the law. You you're you're more than. I think it's gonna. I think yeah. I, I, I think I it, it, yeah. Do you anticipate that those gonna be? No, but it is the most important thing that we've done. So, just trying to be as yeah. I actually careful. Careful. I think right. hiring your lawyer is probably the most important thing you've done. <laughs> but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> That's right. Um. Yeah, I, I don't think that I have anything else on this. Um, okay. I'll just review the things we talked about that I'm going to make edits to is the timeline um, and um, adding a section to the staff report about outreach, adding a fiscal impact, um, making a presentation. Um, I think that that's it. Yeah. Good shape. Okay, All item right. two. Uh, consider solicitation for information from Golden State Risk Management Authority in order to file applications for pricing and services, receive a report from myself, um, and then uh, it includes authorized guys to complete an application from the Golden State, approved risk management authority to seek insurance coverage. So the gentleman got back to me from Golden State. He keeps catching me when I'm in my car or where I can't take notes. So I, I think his name's Walter Michael. But what he did is he went back, he did his own little independent research on us. He looked up, you know, uh, some of, watched our initial board meetings, looked at, looked at the agenda, um, knows where we're meeting. Um, and he took that back to his chief executive officer and said, here's a new organization. Would we underwrite or suggest or ask our underwriters if they would underwrite their insurance? The answer came back is yes. I was expecting before I came to this meeting to have his proposal or his, what his proposal is. You know, their policy is a risk management pool that got over I don't. I think it's maybe. I forgot how many participants in the pool, but they have a general liability policy. That general liability policy. Policy. I don't remember the coverage limits he, that he spoke to me about, but it includes you know general liability, errors and omissions, automobile coverage. Like if someone's driving their own private vehicle and gets in an accident, they come after us. There's coverage. Um, and I'm trying to think there's one other piece to that that I can't think of off well, the hand. But they have trustees and officers. Yeah. Like heirs and emissions. Heirs and omissions, right. Automobile property, portable automobile, mobile equipment, boiler and machinery. Boiler. <laughs> and then they do do workers' comp. There's Golden State. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And so they're offering us general liability insurance. They're underwriting it. We should have a proposal um, before I leave town that the question is, is how do we report this out to the board of directors? Hopefully the policy itself, which will be probably pretty detailed, would be almost self-explanatory to the rest of the boards of directors. Mm -hmm. Although insurance speak gets a little bit complicated when you, mm -hmm. when you aren't haven't studied insurance yeah. but well when you get when you get the uh, proposal um, talk to the board president about getting an item on the agenda okay um, and include that as an attachment is what I would say yeah so once we get the proposal we'll know what the amount is and then in my thinking you know the most important thing we have to do is be able to when we execute that proposal funding pay for it and so I don't know what their payment arrangements are if they have monthly or if they just want you know so much up front probably up front that's how an annual premium usually works what our day of execution would be um, whether everybody thinks it's reasonable and we have good coverage I can tell you he did call back to the contact at Alliant Insurance and I'm not sure why he did that but I think he was just cross-checking back to Alliant, which, you know, gets back to who is this organization, and then it gets back to the county. You know, the, 
so so I think that he was doing good research and doing his own due diligence about yes we're a legitimate district with a responsible board of directors and it's okay to underwrite this so hopefully we get a good bid what's your sense of what the coverage would be on the general liability I forgot he, he again he was rattling it off to me yeah. and I was in the car and so all I wanted to do is you know, it was like me selling him on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took that approach as opposed to saying, you know, we're this brand new organization with no yeah. guidance. Um, yeah. So are you going to have another conversation with him to discuss? Probably when I get the policy and read it, then I could go back and have a little clarification about what it covers. Or the president could even do that. So just to make sure that uh -huh. when the president, if he presents it at the board, and that's what we decide to do, that he has a little bit more knowledge from from the the gentleman at Golden State, Walter. Yeah, we you got to be careful about that because of Brown Act too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Keep that in mind. Right. Um, but you also can't talk to either of us outside a meeting about it either. Right. So and I'm I think not that, well, we can do that, but I, if I yeah. say, Jonathan, I'm handing this off to you. Here's an underwriter bid. Yeah. If you want to, you want to present this at the board and sign it. Go for it. You know? Jonathan, or <laughs> I actually think that that's I think that's copacetic. So um, can case. I can I ask you can I direct your attention to yep. the internet? It's this modern kind of right. I right, gotcha. I went there once. I, I, I've been to Golden State's website. Yeah, and I found their website uh, not very illuminating. About what kind of coverage it was. I About totally nothing. agree, but nothing. I had the yeah. same problem with Skirma's website. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. They, they don't put those so. coverages out there and say, this is what we're offering. So here's what I did I, I dove a little deeper in and kept going, and what I found were references to GSRMA on public record sites of uh, special districts. So if I can direct your attention to the SACOG, which is the Sacramento, uh, what is it, what's it called? It's Ca Council of Governments. Yeah, Council of SACOG. So it's the Sacramento Council. And on their website, it shows a comparison of proposed and current coverage for them, and it provides great detail, not only about what the premium they're paying, but also this, the, the coverage and the specific areas of coverage. And it involves Golden State? Oh. Yeah, Golden State is being compared to their current insurance carrier oh, okay. in a grid that lays out all their coverages, property coverage, portable, you know, automobile, Trustees yeah. and, also, and also the limits okay. of coverage. So it's a real. Yeah. I think it'll. I think it'll be a, of assistance to you as you sit down with him and try and take a look yeah. at mm -hmm. what they're underwriting. But what yeah, they their bid to, to underwrite. their bid to SACOG was one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. Well, SACOG is pretty big. That's SACOG is a huge. That's the state. That's the Sacramento. So that's like Association SBK. of Governments. Yeah, exactly. yeah that's, that's like, like SBK. SBK. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. get that. You have a lot. I was a just I was just there yesterday. They have a really nice building with a huge sign on it that says Sacog. Sacog, yeah. 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 Well, well they're probably so the coverage on their building. You know, they oh, get six hundred million. Of world. When uh, you get funded by a half cent sales tax countywide, it, it, it's pretty powerful. <laughs> big, big county too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks um, for your work on this. This is yeah. Great. Okay. So that sounds so great. The, so do we need to take an action in terms of are we directing? <clears throat> Um, guys to, uh, I, I think he's been previously authorized to to, to oh. investigate this and then so you're yeah. gonna give this to the board president, whatever you yeah. get. I'll try and report out to Ethan to get this before the board of directors if we yeah. think it's a well here's what you do is is you submit a written report to the board president because he's been tasked to keep up the agenda. So that's how I think you should do it. Okay. Um, and if there it. are other people that you just want to talk to that are in the public, then that's your prerogative. Um, 
but yeah, this sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I was I'll thinking, I was doctor. thinking once I got something solid that I could go back to Ray Armatorio and have him coach me a little bit and maybe get some insight mm -hmm. there. So he's just there to help us get coverage. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think hopefully that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's great news. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's really good. I'm so happy they'll underwrite. Yeah. <laughs> After watching one of our meetings. Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking too. Maybe he only looked at the agenda. <laughs> yeah. As yeah. soon as you said they watched our first meetings, I was like, six hours. <clears throat> was the six? Anyway. All right. Um, and then, uh, if we can, just the, the third one is just to continue to discuss, design, and approve a format for a document to guide the work of the formation committee. So, I don't know if you guys had a chance to bring anything yeah, forward. Yeah, that's that's, that's my bad. I, I have it, and I totally forgot to bring it today. That's cool. I don't have it printed, so, um, yeah, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I didn't want to. <clears throat> yeah, my bad. Um, but, I mean, I can tell you the document looks good. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, that's good. All right. With that, um, yeah. Any I, public pu public comment? Well, let's wait for George to get back and see yeah. if he has anything else. Any public comment on the insurance? No. Um, I'm not sure which one you guys decided to go with, but listening over the previous meeting, um, I noticed that you mentioned that you believe that certain, uh, the Golden State Risk Management Authority was a uh, for profit. It's actually not. It's actually yeah. cool. it's a joint it's powers. It's a joint power. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. No worries. Well, right, right now we're doing we're we're looking into GSRMA, and we heard back from was it Alliant, and Alliant said that they wouldn't. Alliant Alliant said that they were switching underwriters, and that their current underwriter. Oh, that's right. That's with right. a hundred million worth of coverage, they are going to switch. So we are we are reading between nice. the lines on that one. Yeah, yeah. and then Sir Special District. Mm -hmm risk management they said no they they just, or they just said go to alliance they sent me to alliance okay. said all we needed is errors and omissions alliance said no you know you they had trouble liability. and they referred me yeah. to golden state okay. to gsr mra and when i called gsmra he you know did a good evaluation of where mm -hmm. we were and making a suggestion about what kind of coverage they could offer us That's and good. getting their underwriters mm -hmm. to to underwrite something, so they're yeah. going to give us a proposal. So yeah, we're and we're looking at general liability, errors and omissions, auto coverage. And that's under uh, under their general liability. That oh, includes all that's that. within general liability. Yeah. Great, cool. that sounds really good. Is that in the packet? No, I haven't got the proposal yet. So uh, I only have a couple of yeah. phone conversations that we had, we had an attachment at the last meeting. I think it was. It was just like a screenshot from their website. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're ready to adjourn. What happened to item three? Item three. They I messed up. I messed up. You didn't bring that. I was supposed to bring it, and I didn't bring it. I didn't. I didn't even attach you it. You give me an hour. All you're we're giving, gonna do is tell. Give me an hour back from my life. Yeah. We're gonna just tell Willie he did a great job when we haven't seen it. You but can we go. Know he did a good you job. You can go talk to more of my friends now. Oh boy, you got some interesting friends. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.